what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to continue planting uh, some annuals and perennials, most of which are good for pollinators, uh, almost all of which are in you know, four or six packs uh, that I purchased or uh, things that I started from seed, with a couple exceptions. I got a couple things in uh, larger containers for this video that are also great for pollinators. Uh, I did this container in the fall, and it has these white pansies in it, uh, which are coming out this morning. Uh, they burn out pretty quick for me in my area. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, zone 7B. They're beautiful in this container all winter, but uh, they are starting to fade, and it's time to uh, put in my summer, summer annuals. The soil that's in here was just put in here in late October, so I'm not going to uh, add anything to it, not gonna change anything. I'm going to uh, uh, pull these out and knock, knock the soil off of them that's on here. I will, after I get these planted, uh, fertilize, uh, and I'll fertilize with uh, really just any kind of flower fertilizer you want to use. I actually have a bag of flower tone right now that I'm going to, uh, to, to, to use on here. That's actually what I'm going to use. I'm trying to leave as much of the soil in here as I can. It's really just kind of my main goal is to reuse as much of this soil as possible. I tree formed or topiaried. Uh, this holly in that same video um, uh, last year if you want to uh, go back and take a look at that video uh, i did several tree forming or topiary videos uh, in the fall and over the winter so uh, you might be interested in those okay so that's pretty much it i've got some uh, ornamental peppers these uh, uh chili chili ornamental peppers uh, that uh the peppers start out yellow like they are now and they'll turn through a series of orange and then to red and so what you end up with on these little ornamental peppers is yellow orange and red uh, peppers uh, all season long and like i say they're just or they're they're just ornamental peppers they stay a little shorter than the zinnias i'm going to use and so i'm just putting these uh, across the front of this uh of this container okay and then i've got two packs of uh of zinnias this is that zahara uh, mix uh, this is raspberry ripple actually this isn't mixed but um, if you can get these zahara uh, uh, zinnias and especially if you can get them in four or six packs these things just perform so well uh, they, they really really do all summer long uh, these uh these stay more compact the ones i do from seed and you'll see some in a, in a little bit will stretch out get quite a bit taller like the binary mixes which which i have get the big beautiful flowers um, but they tend to stretch they get a little leaf spot issues you definitely have to underplant them with something these stay just much fuller a little compact um, much more compact and tame and I can cut these in half in the middle of summer and they just it just encourages them to bloom even more so I've got two packs of these I've got eight plants I'm going to put in the back of this container I have drip irrigation run into these uh, containers I have not hooked it uh, into my system yet, uh, but that will happen pretty soon. I haven't uh, really known exactly where containers are going. I have lots of containers and I kind of move them around quite a bit. So um, when they finally land where they're going to stay, uh, they'll get hooked into the irrigation and be um, just on the automated uh, irrigation. Uh, this uh, next container is just a square that uh, has the same thing going on in it with the white pansies. I have squirrels that plant I've got pecans yeah, pretty much in every pot. Um, I've got a, there's a pecan tree at the end of the road and uh, the, uh, the squirrels like to, uh, to deliver them over here to the house. Um, so constantly pulling, pulling them out. I actually have a couple house plants inside that have them as well uh, where they got them before I brought them in in the fall. Uh, okay, same thing here. Uh, I just wanna get some of this root system out, but this soil was, again, it was also fresh in the fall i'm just going to break it up a little bit make sure i get some of this root system out of here and then i've got some celosia for this uh, this is that new look 
Celosia. I have several varieties of this going in. I have that fresh look Celosia in the backyard in a mix. And this one's called a uh, new look, um, but it's kind of a reddish color. It'll actually match, uh, um, match the inside color on these zinnias and the uh, coloration uh, in the peppers as well. Uh, and these stay pretty compact. And if these, these'll, these are gonna try to get this tall, but I'll cut them occasionally and keep them right in this area. Uh, this upright narrow holly here, if you were trying to duplicate what I'm doing here, uh, this is a variety. I'm trying not to make. I'm trying to make sure I'm not stepping on anything. Uh, this is a variety that hasn't been released yet, but you can get Steeds Holly. Uh, Steeds is one you can keep as a perfect little ornamental like this, and it's widely available. So uh, um, that's what I would uh, recommend. This really isn't going to look like much today, but there's that uh, chili chili pepper. Uh, there's that uh, zinnia couple celosia in this container as well just to carry it over from that one but again this isn't going to look like much today but if you follow along with the channel you'll see how these look as the season goes and again i've got some flower tone fertilizer i'm going to add to the top of these and these uh zinnias are zinnias are hurting for water but uh, they'll pop right back up um, as soon as i get some water in that container mostly what i've been showing is things in four packs and six packs and things i seeded uh, i did make a uh, larger purchase on this uh, mona purple uh plectranthus this one may be hard to find because it's a new variety, but any Plectranthus variety that you can find is great for uh, um, inviting pollinators into your yard. This thing will bloom literally nonstop until it gets a frost in the fall. It's hardy. Um, it's a hardy perennial south of me, but for me, it's not going to uh, last through the winter unless I bring it inside. It'll get this big uh, in this space during the summertime. It's another plant that I can just cut it in half in the middle of summer and uh, get it under control. I'm going to pop it right in the ground uh, in this space uh, next to this uh, boulder that I just uh, that I just uh, rolled up here and put in place, uh, uh, and uh, that's it. Um, Plectranthus, any Plectranthus you can find, uh, great for pollinators through the whole summer. I had a large diseased red maple in the middle of this bed that was taken out last year, and uh, the stump was ground out well, but uh, um, anywhere within 15, 20 feet of this thing, there's crazy amounts of roots, but um, six or you know eight months removed from that now and the roots are getting easier to, uh, to break apart. Uh, one thing to notice on this Plectranthus, it was leaning in the container and I simply um, corrected that while I was planting it. Um, the root ball is planted on a, on a lean in the ground and you never know that it was crooked uh, in the container. Sometimes you can you know, look past that when you're sitting there staring at a plant for 20 minutes deciding whether or not to buy it. Um, a lot of these leans can be corrected uh, when you're planting them, but that's a uh, Mona Purple Plectranthus. Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this I use the same bark and compost mix that I've been using in uh, all of these videos. You could use straight compost if you wanted to. Uh, in this spot, um, I've got these guide wires that come down from a uh, um, electric line. All my lines in this neighborhood. This is a 80-year-old house, so the um, all the lines run above ground in the neighborhood. And I get lucky enough to have a wire here uh, running down into the front yard. I underplanted uh, the wire with this aster, this uh, tower mix um, aster that uh, it'll be uh, shades of white and pink and uh, purple and uh, kind of cranberry. Colors. I don't know what colors uh, these will be, obviously, because it's a mix. Um, probably my luck, it'll be all the same color, but that's fine. These are like peony type um, aster flowers. Uh, so big, nice, double full flowers. We'll see how those perform during the summer. And uh, some Cosmos planted here that I did from seed. These have stretched some. As soon as they look like they've um, established themselves in the ground at all, these are gonna get cut in half almost immediately. That's a kind of a cranberry color. Uh, cosmos uh, that I did from seed in the house uh, and uh, same thing uh, on this side but this is more of a pink uh, variety they don't look great today but again I'm just gonna cut them in half as soon as uh, as soon as they get rooted in at all uh, I've planted some several other things out here that are small so it doesn't look great out here yet these are some leucanthemum that I was able to find in a four pack and uh, so uh, you know you don't often get uh, perennials in four packs, but I was able to uh, with those Shasta daisies. And uh, 
zinnias here, same thing. As soon as they uh, get some uh, roots under them, I'll cut them in half and they'll bloom uh, pretty much all summer. But uh, that, this flower will be much, much larger than this, but you can kind of see the color of that zinnia. And a few more cosmos down here at the end. Um, got some uh, alliums uh, that are uh, kind of in full flower. These aren't the best these will ever look. Um, they'll, be, they'll be bigger, better, fuller next year. And then some butterfly weed that was coming back uh, from last year. So this area out here by the street, honestly, I got, I, got to get, I got more pansies that are coming out and other things that are going in. But doesn't look like much out here, but it won't take long for this to just be full flower inviting uh, on the outside of the, uh, the front yard fence. If you followed along recently, I have been plugging holes throughout this landscape uh, for the last couple of weeks. There's still a few pansies here and there because they look good. Um, I've got things to go in those spaces as those pansies uh, start to burn out. What you saw at the beginning of this video, um, I planted a couple of uh, leucanthemum uh, right here. This is that real charmer leucanthemum. I'll show you a few more in a second that are established for a year. But that perennial stays low like that and uh, green uh, year round and then it uh, blooms kind of throughout the summer with a uh, white and yellow uh, white and yellow flowers it will stay tidy along the edge of my lawn uh, in that area um, I got this uh, uh, salvia went in right here it will actually not stay uh, all that tidy it's probably going to get too big uh, for that space but it's one that's just um, hummingbirds love and I want it right here on the edge of the lawn so I can take photos uh, of it same thing I got salvias through here uh, that I planted in a separate video and that saucy red salvia uh, all of these things are for hummingbirds and I actually put them up here close even though they're actually going to get a little taller you know normally I would probably layer them back but I actually want to get some photos of hummingbirds this summer behind that you saw me plant some dwarf sunflowers I did these uh, dwarf sunflowers from seed they can be seeded directly in the ground but the squirrels are pretty good at stealing them if you try that um, so I did them in the in the house uh, these are ones that only get a couple of feet tall and they're just blended into a few places uh, in the uh, landscape again um, go back and look at the videos that I've put up recently and um, all of these all of these places um, have things in them that I've planted recently a few more of those dwarf sunflowers container work um, laying out things uh, rearranging and and planning uh, the rest of last of my containers that's the next video you will see uh, lots and lots to do there I'll back you around slowly so you can see um, everything how everything's coming together back here uh, stones have been going in and paths or permanent paths are about to go into place in between uh, and they won't be quite this wide uh, I want to leave wide enough spaces where I can bring carts in between uh, rocks and that kind of thing but the path will only be maybe that wide okay and so I'll have ground cover things lower growing things you'll see this you'll see this evolve more uh, as time goes on um, uh, in this area there are a couple more of those plectranthus uh, that I planted uh, in that area right there and I have to raise everything up in this spot my water hose and uh, uh, utilities are back here and um, it stays a little wetter here so I did, uh, I did raise these up um, a little bit. These are Stokes um, asters uh, in this space and a few more right behind uh, those, uh, those stones that are in that spot. One other thing that I put in was some cat mint. In a video a week or two ago, I put these dahlias in and uh, they're just getting themselves rooted in. They'll, <laughs> they'll end up three feet tall. Uh, it won't take that long uh, actually um, once, they get, once they get rooted in, another month or so. Basil went in there and I put some cat mint along the edge of this path coming from the uh, gate uh, from the front yard. But uh, again, um, lots of holes uh, filled in this morning in the landscape um, and a lot more to go. I'm, again, I'm doing containers next. Then I'm going to pull the rest of the pansies out uh, and fill in the uh, and fill in those spots next. So thanks for following along, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification to be alerted when I upload new content.